Hi. I'm kind of crazy to think I have time to make a video right now, but I think I'm using the wrong math curriculum. <gasps> so, stop the press. Okay, let me start at the beginning. When I first started homeschooling, I bought The Well-Trained Mind, and I read through that, and it recommended several math programs, and I narrowed it down between Abeka and Saxon. But I really didn't have a good reason to choose one or the other. And I looked at um, private schools and they were using Saxon. So I did what I usually do when I don't have a good reason and I didn't have enough information to make a good choice. I uh, found what everybody else was doing and I did the other one. <laughs> so I started with Abeka and it had a good reputation and um, it's all that I could come up with at the time. And then I started Robinson Curriculum and I listened to Dr. Robinson talk about the Saxon math books and talk about John Saxon. And then I, I read about John Saxon. And then I watched John Saxon, John Saxon on YouTube do a 60 Minutes interview and I heard a radio interview of John Saxon talking to Dr. Robinson, I believe. So after that I had a lot more information to make my decision and then I just tried it. Um, if you know me at all, you know that I like the, the older first edition math books, especially after reading his book, and I'm kind of a, a purist, you know. And I read the story of how he created these, these books, and it just made sense to me to go with what he wrote in the beginning because um, of his purpose for creating the books to begin with and the reasons that the later changes were made uh, were made to please other people, mainly to please schools so he could get into the schools and, and sell the books, but who decides what goes in the schools besides government officials? So I, um, I am a purist and I do tend to go with the um, first editions. And what I found, I never thought I could talk for 10 minutes on a math book, but I, I did with that video I did a long time ago comparing the first and third editions of Saxon 5-4. And what I found, at least in the early books that I've looked at so far, the 5 4 6, 5, 7, 6, 8, 7, um, the earlier editions tend to be just straight to the point. Not a lot of fluff. Here's what I want you to learn. Now go learn it. And that's working well for me and my family. And now the question is, uh, we're getting up into the other books, Saxon 8, 7, and Algebra 1 half. Ooh, this is a second edition, you can tell, because it has, well, it's not 100% across the board, but it's got those two dots that typically need second edition. This has no dots, so it's a first, usually. Sometimes there's some tricks to that. Okay, yes, so now my friends and I are going, oh, do we do all these books or do we skip them? Do we do, do them all or skip them? Okay, and according to this, John Saxon's story, this Algebra 1 half was an extra book to help transition, like the 8-7, from, from the uh, elementary mathematics to the algebra. So, when he wrote it though, it was like an extra book because there wasn't a year in the school system that you could get it in. See? <laughs> so, um, could be, could be redundant. I guess if you're going to a, a public school or maybe even a private school, you wouldn't necessarily have time for this. Um, so some people skip it. Why not? I don't know. But I have not had that issue in my homeschool because my, the only kid I have that's old enough to do this so far, um, started the 5-4 at age six and a half and went 5-4, 6-5, almost all the way through, 7-6, almost all the way through, back to 6-5, 7-6, 8-7, and just started this and all that before he is, uh, he's still 11 and he's already in this book so it's not really an option for me to skip it because the only other book I have to go to is Algebra 1 and <laughs> at some point you have to stop and let the kids grow up and let their brains develop to be able to handle the abstract. Um, maybe he could handle the Algebra 1, I don't know, but uh, I'm just, for me and my family um, and this kid, I'm I'm going to stick with, uh, hey, let's just do another book, why not? Because we have time. And I like lots and lots of drill and lots and lots of practice. 
Um, okay, if you were in a different scenario, which I may be with my other two because they did not start by four at age six and a half, or seven, or eight, um, maybe eight, anyway, uh, we might not have, I don't know if we'll be uh, pushed for time or have to make a different decision by the time we get there, but um, that's one thing to consider. Where are you? Do you have enough time to do an extra book? And let's see, one of John Saxon's favorite quotes here in the back. I don't think I can find it in time without my glasses. You grasp an abstraction almost by osmosis through long-term exposure. So I kind of want to do long-term exposure and then it'll just like kind of sink in. They can hardly help it, right? <laughs> Having to do a lesson a day. Okay. Um, and then, lastly, I'm an industrial engineer, so I was in college and we studied, you know, Frederick Taylor and father of industrial engineering. And if you go back to, there was a factory outside of Chicago in the 1920s or 1930s, and they wanted to do um, a designed experiment, actually. I don't know if they called it that at the time, but a study on the manufacturing, the assembly line, to see if the workers could increase their productivity or if, the, if they could change parameters and have any effect on the productivity. So they, they had one line work you know, regularly, and the other line they increased the lighting. Okay, and uh, that improved the productivity. And so they, they made a lot of changes, and in every case it improved the productivity. And then they put everything back to the way it was in the beginning, and the productivity was still higher. <laughs> so what they concluded was just the fact that they were studying improved the productivity, studying the people improved the productivity. So I would like to add whether you choose this book this book or first edition or last edition or you know a completely different program um, I think just the fact that you're the mom and you're paying attention and you you can see your kids every day and you know this is working this is not working they need more they need less I mean you know it just like you know I have a half tank of gas in the car and I need to get some tea bags next time I'm at the grocery store I mean you just have these things running in your head because you're mom and you know these things and um, so I think a big part of the success is that we're paying attention and we know what's going on and you, you have that feeling and I think you can trust that to some extent um, you know what you know what to do so I hope that was helpful and not confusing and just let me encourage you you've got this you know what to do and the resources out there are just amazing um, YouTube forum, uh, YouTube forums, Facebook forums, YouTube videos. Um, don't listen to me too much because you are the expert on your family. And thanks for watching. And go give your kids more math problems. Woohoo!